Go 1.23 brings significant updates to the language, including a new structs module and unique operations, as well as expanded functionality for slices and maps. But two notable functionalities stand out to me, especially the one where it comes to sorting in Golang, because right now it's sort of limited at the moment. That's why in this video we are going to talk about the new sorted func function in Golang that enables some better sorting capabilities and the new timer functionality, which includes changes to their garbage collection mechanism for these timers and their asynchronous behavior. So let's first look at the big change for the sorting functionality of slices and go. So what specifically is new? There is now a sorted func and sorted func stable function in the slices package. Now now these two new functions that come with Go 1.23 basically allow you to first create a custom comparison function while sorting and the second point is it returns a new slice. That really means it does not manipulate the original slice in place. Now this is a highly requested feature in the Golang community to basically make things easier when it comes to sorting. So the first use case to demonstrate this sorting or this new sorting functionality is that we do want to apply a custom comparison function, right? And the second thing is we do not necessarily want to manipulate the array in place. So we do not want to manipulate the original slice. So let's just get started by defining a simple struct Right, and this struct contains some fields, like we have the ID, and let's just declare here the string. This should be relatively straightforward, hopefully. And let's just directly use this here by declaring a member slice, right, by just saying member. And then in here, we can declare our members by, for instance, just saying zero and then John. Let's just create three more entries for that. So I'm going to use Jane, Alice, and Bob here for this example. And now we kind of want to sort this slice by name, for instance, alphabetically, right? How we can achieve this in Go 1.22? That is pretty straightforward. We can just make use of the sort func function, right? And this looks pretty strange. I mean, the definition looks pretty strange, but let's just get rid of the generics here. Let's just say that the first parameter, which is a slice, is the members slice. And then the compare function, right? Our custom comparison function just takes in basically a P1, which is person or member one, let's just say M1 and M2, both are of type member and it returns an int, right? That is pretty straightforward. And then in here, we just say cmp.compare to compare two fields with each other. And in here, we obviously use the first name of M1 and the first name of M2. So I think this functionality should be relatively straightforward and there is not a huge change. But if we like obviously print now the member slice, we do get the sorted slice back. So if I r now run go run main go, we obviously see the sorted slice, which is alphabetically sorted by first name, which is pretty cool, I think. But the actual use case just said that we do not want to manipulate the original array. So how can we do this in Go 1.22? Now we can achieve this by just declaring a new slice called sorted members. And then we kind of clone by using the slices.clone function, the members slice, right? And with that, we now have two slices in memory and we can print the sorted members and also the original members. And if we now run this, we do get the sorted slice and the unsorted slice, which is cool, right? But obviously Go would not be Golang if there isn't an easier way. And this easier way was introduced with Go 1.23. So instead of using sort func, we can just make use of sorted func. And this sorted func now only wants the values of our slice. So we can say slices.values and then we say members. So we can get rid here of the sort members first, All right? Let's make this a bit more clearer here, right? And the rest stays the same. We can obviously remove the print line. And now this returns, or we cannot remove the print line. Obviously we want to print the sort of members as well. And if we go now into sorted func here, we see that it's kind of doing the same thing we actually have done, right? So it kind of collects 
the sequence, basically it clones the sequence or the slice in this case, and then it just called sort func, right? It's more or less the same thing. And obviously this returns now a sorted member slice. So we do not have to manually clone our slice here. We just have to call sorted func and then sorted func takes care of the rest. Obviously with a lot of optimizations compared to the slices.clone functionality. And if we now run our application, we see the same output. All right, this was now the first big change I wanted to mention. Now let's quickly look at the timer functionality here. Now things will get a bit more complex than that. So the two significant changes for the timer is first the garbage collection, where garbage collection basically means that memory is automatically freed up for us and we do not have to take care of deallocation of variables, for instance, or of some memory. And the second thing is related to the stop and reset behavior. So let's quickly first look at the garbage collection change here. So in Go 1.22, timers are not automatically freed up for the memory, right? Now this kind of sounds strange, but basically timers are not clean from the memory until they expire, right? So whenever I create a timer and it only expires after an hour, the memory is really cleaned up after this hour, right? And now in Go 1.23, a really smart garbage collection mechanism is employed into this timer functionality. So basically now, whenever the timer is not referred in the program anymore, it is eligible for garbage collection. And therefore the memory is freed up in this case. So let's quickly look at an example here. Let's just create a context, right? That is cancelable. So with cancel, and then we say context or background. Don't worry, I will make a new video about just specifically about the context package here. And then we just call defer cancel. Obviously we have to declare this here. There we go. And now let's just create a channel, which is of type string. So we can only receive and send strings through this channel. And then let's just create a go routine, which is automatically called. And in here we do have a sort of infinite for loop and we make use of the select here where the first case is basically the incoming data from the channel itself. And then we might also have like a timer, right? Which is called just after an hour. So let's say time dot hour here. And then we also have the use case if the context itself is done, right? Whenever the context is done or canceled, we just return. Right now, whenever we kind of get or receive the data from our channel, we might just, I don't know, encrypt the string, do some sort of transformation with the string or do something business related, right? This is not about the business case, it's just about this timer here. Now, the problem with this specific case is that this timer in Go 1.22 is not freed up in any case whenever this timer basically is not used anymore, right? So it only is freed up in the memory after one hour, which is really strange. And this has been fixed in Go 1.23. So to demonstrate this, how it actually affects the memory, we are going to create a unique utility function that just measures the used memory for this application here. Right, so let's create a function called get used mem, which stands for get used memory, and it returns a UN64. Now this might look strange, right? But first here we declare a runtime.memstats, which just contains important statistics of the memory. Now this can include the heap size, the stack size, or the used memory of this application. I think I'm going to make an explicit video about just that, because obviously it's a bit more complicated than that. Then we are going to call runtime GC. I'm going to explain this in a minute here. And then we say runtime, read memstats, and we are going to use M in this case. Now obviously this has to be a reference to the memory of M. And then we return m.alloc, right? Which just returns, as the documentation says here, the bytes of allocated heap objects, which we want. So what does this thing do here? First, the read memstats basically fills in this variable with the statistics of our memory, right? I think this should be relatively clear. Now this GC 
just means that it kind of forces the garbage collection to run and free up memory, right? And kind of clear the unused variables and all the unused stuff we do not use in our program. Now, this just ensures that any unused memory is reclaimed before we actually continue with the execution. All right, so let's get back to our Go routine here. And then we want to measure the memory before, right? Before actually sending data to our channel. So we say mem before and then get used mem. And then let's just declare this directly mem after, right? And then in here, we do want to maybe send 10,000 strings into our channel. So we say C, and then we just send some kind of string right into the channel itself 10,000 times in this case. And now we can declare the mem used or calculate the mem used by saying mem after subtracted by mem before, right? And then we can simply print F the used memory. And then we say KB because we want kilobytes. And then we say mem used divided by 1024. Now mem use is in bytes here, and that's why we kind of divide by 1024 to just print the used memory in kilobytes. Okay, with that in mind, let's quickly run the program here, and we see that the memory used is five kilobytes, which is pretty good, right? And this is in Go 1.23. Let's quickly copy this program and go to the official Go Playground and select the version Go 1.22. And then we paste this code in. And now we want to run this program. And what we see is that over 2000 kilobytes are actually used, right, which is really strange. So there is some kind of memory leak for these timers. And this has been fixed in Go 1.23. So basically, this timer is now freed up until it's basically not used anymore in the application, right? And not like in Go 1.22 after an hour, right? So this is a really good improvement for the timer functionality. Now, the second thing I wanted to mention for timers is the reset behavior, right? So let's quickly get rid of the code here, right? Let's just create a timeout and let's just say that this is 10 milliseconds right i think this is pretty straightforward no big change so far or no complicated thing here so then we do declare a new timer with the duration which will be timeout right so we just declare a new timer and then we sleep for 20 milliseconds and then we want to kind of measure the time because there is an issue in go 1.22 here and then we reset the timer with the specific timeout, right? So now what this basically means is that we create a timer that has a duration or a timeout of 10 milliseconds, then we wait 20 milliseconds, right? So the timer has ended, right? And the thing is with the timer, if you look at the official code here, there is a C which is a channel that basically is triggered whenever the timer has ended, right? So we can make use of this C here. So we wait 20 milliseconds, then the channel C in our timer is triggered, right? And then we reset with the timeout, which basically now means that the timer is reset with our 10 milliseconds, right? So it should restart in this case. And then we wait until the timer basically sends something to the channel whenever it is done. And then we just want to print F something here again. And we say time elapsed. So we want to measure the time elapsed of this start here. And we say percent %d, right? And then ms for milliseconds. And then we say time since start, and then we say milliseconds. So let's format this print statement here. So let's quickly run this code first in Go 1.22, because then things will become a bit more clear about why this is actually a bit of a trouble in Go 1.22. So let's copy it in in the Go Playground again. Let's run this application. And what we see is time elapsed zero milliseconds. Now, this is a weird issue with the timers in Golang, right? So why is this actually the case? The thing is that t.reset, so the resetting functionality of the timer does not drain the channel, right? So basically this 
functionality here the t.reset reset does not drain the channel the timer channel and therefore this kind of waiting until the channel of the timer is finished or it receives a signal does not get blocked and it proceeds immediately right which is strange and obviously wrong so we get with go 1.22 a time elapsed of zero milliseconds and if we run this now with go 1.23 the time elapsed is 11 milliseconds right which is correct more or less because obviously this takes some time as well so it should be around 10 or 11 milliseconds now again to recap this issue here with timers in go 1.22 is that whenever we reset the timer in go 1.22 it does not drain the channel which just means that there is already an event for the channel right so this is executed immediately because the timer has expired instantly because we wait 20 milliseconds here so there's no need to basically wait for a new event for a new signal through this channel right and that's why it proceeds immediately in go 1.22 in go 1.23 it now kind of resets or drains the channel whenever we call the reset function here I hope that was clear. Now, hopefully this was not too confusing. And if you want to know how Go 1.22 actually fixes an issue that caused Google a lot of troubles, then feel free to check out this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.